Welcome to another edition of From the Still. So, without too much fuss or too much ado, because there's a great interview to do, let's get into the interview with Matt Granger from the Jin Discover the Jindu or just Jindu Distilleries. Over to you, Matt. Let's begin this interview. Let's get busted. Welcome to from another edition of From the Still. Now today I've gone and visited my friend Matt from Jin, Discover Jindu at his home. That's the reason why you can see the uh, chaos in the background. And we're here to talk about Matt's amazing range of gins. And Jindu is noted for only using Australian native botanicals. That's correct, correct isn't it? That is correct. The other interesting thing is that there are a lot of really interesting characters in the gin industry. And I know there's at least two carpenters, and you're a travel agent. Big travel background from day one, basically. So, which has inspired the range of gin. So, with your and your travel agency does into the outback. So, my business partner's an outback tour guide of 25 years. So, a lot of the um, heritage and and history of what we do is is through that connection. But all of us have a travel background. So. Starting up in COVID, that was the opportunity to um, reinvent travel, so virtually through through the bottle and outside of Juniper, only using native Australian botanicals. And even your labels have got native maps on them? Uh, not native maps, just a stylized map, but um, again, just leaning into the travel theme, so you'll see the key botanical down the side as well, yes. just listing where the botanicals are. But yeah, so that's our um, stylized map on. I cannot thank you enough for putting the botanicals on the side of the bottle. <laughs> because when someone says, oh, it's got exotic botanicals, it's okay, so okay. your idea of an exotic botanical may be my idea of having breakfast. Because <laughs> now, being married to Southeast Asians for the last 35 years, an exotic botanical to someone might be ginger. Yeah, correct, yeah. But I have ginger with my chai on Sunday mornings with my um, banana pancakes. So cardamom's not an exotic to me. <laughs> um, Haven't been someone that should ever put durian into something. Um, but yeah, so the idea of putting exotic botanicals on that, but you actually list them, and it's gets yep. So when I'm doing a um, review, I can literally go down the bottle and go, yep, okay, I'm tasting this, yep. this, this, and this, and it makes it pretty simple. Because as my darling wife will tell you, if I'm left to my own devices, things just go sideways. <laughs> um, Precisely. It's, it's never really good if I'm left to my own devices or come to my own conclusions. Um, because at times they can be the worst possible conclusions. <laughs> um, so you've got your core range, which is here. Yeah. So you've got your signature, which <clears throat> I've reviewed. You've got your coaster, which I've had the pleasure of reviewing recently, and the white one I haven't. So it's our original. That's the one we started with, the white one. So. Um, First gin we made out, it's actually got a botanical from every state of Australia. We deliberately lowered the juniper levels on this one so that the botanicals came to the fore. So it's a really light 40% gin, um, can be drunk neat and it's a great introduction um, mm. to, to gin. Uh, we call it our market gin because people that want to buy broccoli at farmers markets at nine in the morning probably don't necessarily want to drink gin, but this is a great way. The nose is fantastic and it sucks them in and off they go. So. <laughs> It's a great introduction, uh, introductory gin, nice, nice and light, and really of Australia as well. Okay, so it would be similar to Broken Toy Everyday Salvation, which is a really mild yeah. gin. That's right, as I said, it's Australian definitely not that, not that juniper up front. So um, that's pretty good. So that's, it's, it's got enough juniper in there to be a gin, but um, not enough that it's a London dry style. So it's, it's um, yeah, it's all flavour, okay. all flavour. Selena's just suddenly cringed because we she loves a London dry. Oh, we all do. Hey, I love gin. <laughs> I, I, I love gin full stop. It's yeah. a case of, for me, I am part of the crowd that loves a citrus forward gin. So I love all of my flavours. And one of those gorgeous bottles, if you could indicate there, has got my attention because it is a gorgeous, gorgeous uh, gin cello. And it is a very, very citrus forward drink. Yeah. We have, Just my style. <laughs> we have partaken of this. So you've got, then the coastal, which is I know for a fact it's really quite straightforward. Um, I was tasting a lot of salt 
a lot of yeah the into finish it. the the nose is um is is coastal so you all the botanicals grow along the from the shipwreck coast um, of victoria around through the coorong in south australia and they grow on the cliffs so it's not an ocean gin it's a coastal gin so they're getting hit by the by the sea spray by the wind so they, they really do impart that both on the nose and also on the finish and then the front of the coastal is is nice and, and nice and citral um, with sunrise limes rainforest lychees and the like so it it masks the 48 percent and creates a really smooth contemporary gin and it's it's done really well for us and i actually had to look up the rainforest lychee it is it's a bit nuts. <laughs> it's, um, not, it's more tamarind than lychee, but uh, definitely not an Asian lychee, so you'd be very disappointed. And the flesh actually grows on the outside, so you've got the nut and the flesh grows on the outside. So peeling those bad boys, is that's when you want to be absent because that just numbs your entire fingernails and your entire front portion of your finger because you are literally just ripping, ripping flesh off and a lot of flesh to get as much as we need in there. That's a thankless task. I'm a tropical boy. I was raised in Mackay. I spent half my childhood falling out of mango trees and the other half falling out of um, tamarind trees. <laughs> um, the other half um, running away from green tree ants which were yeah, in those good. trees and biting me in places yeah. I'd rather not have been bitten. Bitten full stop, absolutely. <laughs> but no, no, so that's that's dang trees. So um, yeah, so right up right up in far north Queensland. But so I've got the impression that any further north than you'd be in, in New Guinea. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> About a thousand kilometres, no, it'd be five or six hundred kilometres further north of where I come from. It's dangerous outside Cairns. For those of you who aren't Australian uh, and, uh, or are like my wife geographically challenged, you, you go to Cairns and then you basically keep going. Yeah, and when the roads stop, you kind of like you're in the danger. It's a massive, it's a, a much bigger, it's only gotten a much bigger part um, outside Cairns. Don't get there during the uh, wet season. Unless you've got a boat, it rains by the meters up there. Mm, it's um, rainforest. Yeah, it rains that hard. People who haven't been in the tropics, it actually stings when it hits you. <laughs> which is something I've had to say to my kids who were raised in Melbourne. He okay, said, so, "Oh, Dad, the rain's good." And he said, "No, you go up to where I come from, sunshine during December, and the rain stings. You come in and out of the rain not because it's it's wet and cold. That you come out of the rain because it hurts when it hits you, um, and that's just the rain. So that's." Moving right along, this is the signature dry gym which I've looked at and enjoyed, and that lasted about that long in my house. Yeah, that's uh, we wanted to do um, our first gin. Basically, these are the opposite end of the gin spectrum in terms of uh, flavour profiles. So this one being really, really floral and botanical, we wanted to create a traditional um, our take on a traditional London dry, hence the Australian dry. Uh, and this one again, um, trophy winner, double gold winner in San Fran, and it just does what it says on the tin. And a gin and tonic done well is, is one of life's simple pleasures, and um, that's exactly what that gin is. I gotta correct you a gin and tonic done well with this is not one of life's simple pleasures. In my house, it's one of life's necessities. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you very much. I know our kids call gin our mum and dad's sanity, <laughs> and um, to not tell too much away from home. Um, we had an absolutely horrid weekend with the twins recently and we went out and we drank until we actually liked them. <laughs> three quarters, Does that? Three Three quarters that? of a bottle later yeah. we finally decided we actually liked the twins. A good gin then. Have you seen this? I am bouncing on my toes because I am seeing a flippin' awesome barrel age. I love my barrel age gins. Can you talk around that please? Yeah, this was a real surprise because most barrel-aged gins I've tried are really big yeah. on the oak and I'm working on the basis that the oak they use is simple um, Kirkus Robe or English oak or possibly pin oak and it's really... Ugh. This was really nice and quite sweet at the end and so that's the reason why I, I was chatting to Matt in Facebook and saying, okay, What's the oak? Because this is nowhere near as a punch in the face of all the other barrel aged like I use, which like flow state, I wasn't really a fan of because the oak was so strong. Okay. And this was a lot well, way peeled back. So we get our barrels from Starwood. So we've got two at the moment, both 100 litre casks. We've got a tawny and an apparel. Uh, we use the dry gin because it's a good gin. So, um, yeah. but we lightly oak it only. So um, anywhere from a month to two to three, no more, because we want gin to still be the focus of it. So it's only ever lightly oaked, but the apera obviously lengthens the palate, the sweetness of the sherry just really, just just works really well with the bloodlines in the, in the gin. 
and the tawny is just a a lot of fun there's just a lot going on a lot more a lot more flavor but again we don't want it to be a barrel we want it to be um we want it to be a gin that just happened to sit in a barrel for a little bit so um yeah so again it's just our style like we're, we're all about the gin so yeah it works for us for yeah. those of us who are watching who don't know what the oaking style is can you just go a little bit into what the traditional um barrel aged whiskies would end up being and why yours is so good ha, apart from the fact that you make it oh. yes, well apart from the fact that you make it well it, for us as i said it, it really just just comes down to simplicity which is it, which is what we do with our gins as well so it's trying the um because these barrels obviously had whiskey in them so it's trying the whiskey that came out tough part of the job um, but we, we tend not to overcomplicate it. So we just find barrels that we believe will work. We use, only use this gin um, for our barrel aging at the moment. We may play around with the coastal. We've got a few a few ideas in, in, in the little back pocket at the moment, but that might, that might change that up. But again, it's not, um, it's not something that we, we go too hard in because it's not a whiskey. And if you get whiskey drinkers, they will sort of take one look at it and get but they like whiskey, not gin. So it's not really about trying to please a whiskey drinker. It's just about trying to create a bit of sense of fun around what gin can do. And almost the way you look at it is these are our limited releases of our barrel series, uh, limited release gins, because it's a bit of fun. So we've got our serious gins, if you like, and you might notice that the wax is different. Uh, we are in the process of changing around our branding and packaging. Um, so that is part of creating just um, new moving to, moving to cork and trink. It's just um, a little less jarring. Um, you can see here that's very black once it comes up to the top and a black cap underneath there sitting on a shelf doesn't necessarily um, work for us. So we're moving away from that slightly, um, but you know, that's all part of what needs to be done and the list is long. So um, yeah, let's, let's not get into that. And there's no point in trying to reinvent the wheel or messing with perfection. No, oh god, no. It's um, yeah, the barrels have been around a long time, so it's just more fun for us. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not something that we want to go crazy on, but it's just something that we enjoy. And, and our other partner in crime is a Scotsman, so we're always going to do it. <laughs> yes, it's going to be Scotch involved at some point. I mean, like I guess other people. Um, my other half here, you can hear people. She teaches chemistry. I practice it, um, and so do you. And it's one of the joys of, of being involved mostly with gin is because vodka plus juniper equals gin. After that, it's a case of let's party. Yeah. Let's see what we can throw into it. Yeah. Um, I know that in view, go out and harvest fennel alongside railway lines because there's <laughs> seasonal differences in the fennel that they harvest. So the, the fennel in spring has a different NSE profile to the fennel harvested in autumn. And that's the reason why they yeah. play with it. They yeah. said, look, it'd be more cost effective. And they said, it'd be more cost effective if we actually bought it off the local greengrocer. But the flavor profiles of the wild stuff actually yeah. change with the seasons. Well, most of the botanicals, most of the Australian natives are, are seasonal. They're not uh, commercially grown. So you are impacted by the seasons. You are impacted by supply. Um, so therefore the gins may be slightly different batch on batch and that's okay. Because again, that's that's a reflection of, of where we're from and, and what we were trying to create too. So we're not wedded to every single taste must be exactly the same. Okay, now the rainforest cherry. Yeah, what's the botanical name on it? Oh, uh, it has one. So yeah. let's just let's tick that box. So I'll, I'll uh, go and look, <laughs> look it up because it's a beautiful. It's a blush. Yeah, yeah, it, and the funny thing is, a lot of the Australian natives are badly named. So you think cherry, and you look at that colour and think that would be really sweet. It's actually quite sour. It's a sour cherry. So um, these two are quite fun in that this one needs you sweeten it to how you want it to be. This one's already sweet. So um, they're opposite ends of the scale. You can have a lot of fun with both. Um, uh, quite fun in, in some in cocktails, but also quite fun and neat. But mm. it's it's quite hard to make a sour gin for the ten percent of people that'll like it. So you you are really pushing it uphill if you think that it's it's a good idea to make for ten percent of the market. So it's it's a lot of fun. That's all natural colour. So um, we steeped this gin um, for for a period of time. Um, it does fade because we don't fasten it. We don't put any um, additives or anything in our gins. So the, the, the flavour definitely does not, I can assure you. But it's a lot of fun and 
quite unique and as you mentioned now hashtag discover gin do that's what our gins are about it's about discovering different ways and, and what the gins can do and what the different botanicals can do some yeah. won't be to everyone's taste but that's that's fine as well that's why we've got got a handful to choose from when you're making gin you're not making um, presidents aren't you well, we're not making friends sometimes we are and that's fine We'd like to make a couple of friends. <laughs> Some of your friends are quite questionable. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, and as for the native naming of um, Australian plants, just think of a lot of Englishmen who have got no idea what the hell they were looking at you might actually have a botany background <laughs> uh, to the point where the great botanist of Australia um, is actually in St Kilda Cemetery, Ferdinand von Bühler. Yeah, right. He's actually in the Jewish section and Ferdy um, named the macadamia and stuff like that, so after a friend, Macadam. <laughs> and go. he always boasted that he'd found every plant in Southeast Australia and found every eucalypt and literally 30 years after he dropped off the birch they found one and they yeah, called it crazy. Neglector <laughs> because Ferdy had neglected to find it he's also the guy or the clown responsible for introducing um, Blackberry <laughs> so well yeah well we won't be using that um, <laughs> no <not that>. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah when it comes down to drunk Englishmen or in this case a, a German um, yeah, they had no idea what they were looking at because they were bumping into things that they literally had no equivalent for. <laughs> there's, you guys yes, looking exactly right. of, we've got none of these back home. None of yeah, this no, looks exactly. remotely like what's back home. Yeah, and that, that's what creates a, um, you know, a true product of Australia is using um, botanicals. You know, there's a lot of traditional botanicals, uh, a lot of fasteners, your iris and your angelica and things like that. We don't, they're not native, so we don't use those. So we really are creating outside of juniper gins that are. Uh, true expression of Australia which is that's our background so uh, and that's 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 why we did it so it just um, it's true to why we, why we made gin and why we'll continue to make it it's also the reason why for those of you who are, that have the joy of living in this country the reason why Australian gins rock up to international competitions and we just slay the competition because you guys don't get our botanicals you don't have no, access to the diversity I mean European gins you're going to have Coriander, fair enough. Um, half of Asia's got that. Juniper goes across most of Eurasia. Mm -hmm. And you got your alcohol, and alcohol can be made of everything from grapes through to potatoes. Having said this, just because Europe has their particular stock to standard doesn't necessarily mean that they are bad. There are some oh gorgeous man. European gins that we are keen to try when we get That's over there. Good ones. But we're, di we're deep diving into the pool of Australian botanicals at the moment. So yeah. Yeah. all you European viewers out there, um, drop a comment below um, for any suggestions of things we should try that would compete with our gins. Because in a couple of years' time, I'm going to have my ass in Europe and I'm going to be paying European prices for gin and drinking a rather large amount of Spanish gins. So, it's not a bad thing. Get to the. Well, trust me, it'll be a, a burden <laughs> being in Spain and drinking Spanish gins. And the final one, which is a new and very limited release, and I will be reviewing this one in the very near future, it's your Gin Cello. Talk to us about this one. So this one's really cool. So literally released just a couple of weeks ago. Um, it is cut blood limes, which all the flavour and colours leached out. The blood lime is, is a red finger lime hybrid, um, an amazing fruit, really earthy, uh, limey citrus, just just wonderful. So reusing that as the main uh, main citral within the gin, uh, and then slightly sweetening it, sweetening it. And we wanted it to still be a gin, so it still um, comes in at 35%. So it's not overly sweet it's not liqueur level uh, not syrupy in any way so great as a pour over ice cream um, great as a um, little champagne flute uh, wonderful neat and a sensational breakfast martini so I did have a lot of fun with that one it doesn't last long there's a bit of a hole in the bottom of the <laughs> bottle yeah. unfortunately um, and um, it's going to be disgusting stuff darling You'll, you, you won't be needing to no ice cream um, no ice cream We'll batch ice cream. Oh, yes. Yeah, so we'll get nice. kicked out. So, um, you're about to, news breaking news. I'm about to be kicked out of Bull's Batch Elson Week because um, they're going to catch me um, loading up my ice cream scoop. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, this is the amazing gins from Discover Jindu. This is my friend Matt who just makes magic in a bottle. Um, and you've enjoyed watching. Uh, from the still, and no, I haven't been drinking that much. <laughs> I was helping myself to whiskey sours last night and um, realizing the true use of my lemon tree out at the back of my house. Um, so, but thank you very much for having no us worries. to do this. I, um, 
I, we came here to pick up this and I think we are taking this home with us as well. <laughs> no, we won't go telling anyone. Um, and I think I will be going home and telling the kids to just stay away from dad. He needs some downtime and bike tonight. Okay, so just go away. Um, I'm, I'm needing time by myself. I don't need to talk to you because I'm going to be drinking this stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>